Good evening, it's April 11th, and welcome to the Boots Loses His Mind on the pub, on Fred Tricker and the Public, Part 2. And when we, when we left off yesterday, we saw Fred Tricker, we saw Boots say whatever it was that Boots actually didn't say or said. It was hard to get it, I'm not sure Boots knew. And, th and then we saw Fred's response. And then Clay closed it, and now we're at Public Comments. So if you're following this along... Here's where the public, that Boot says he don't care what they have to say. And the word on the street is that supposedly the developers, like Shipman and them and Clay, and they're going to get it where the, we the public can't go up there and tell them what we think. Now, if that happens, folks, that's the end of Walton County, uh, the people being in charge of it. It's going to be the government. It's going to be lawyers and developers, and nothing else is going to matter, and the public might as well just not even come and let them just sell off what they're going to sell off. Small victories in the planning meeting tonight, but this is about the this is about the April 9th meeting, and this is part two. So look what the public has to say about Mr. Tricker, and watch Boots, and watch the rest of them realize how bad this really is. And so, without further ado, we'll go we'll go to that. And so with this, we'll start with Fred's own words. Go ahead, Fred. No, sir. Uh, I do appreciate the opportunity to come and talk to you and present to you. So hopefully it's been helpful. I want to help Walton County, I believe. In Walton County, I'm trying to do what's right for Walton County. And I have no other intent in my ears. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Tricker. Mr. Chairman, at this time, I believe it will be appropriate to ask, is there a motion or will it get any further? If there's a motion, I think that we'll go to public comment and then we'll get into Mr. Drake's portion. Listen to this bullshit. Mr. Tricker is through. I want to make sure you had opportunity. With the thank opportunity? For your service, Mr. Tricker, I do make the motion to honor my removal from the Outcome Planning Board. My request to remove it. And the motion, Mr. McCormick, you are saying that the charges constitute cause in your opinion, and that's what you're yes, making the motion on. Based off the totality of the And what Boots mean is a picture was worth a thousand words, and he was at the horsepower pavilion, and we're trying to shut them down. We're going to give them some more paperwork in the next day or two just as a punishment. But I had pictures of Fred, and he went somewhere I didn't like. And I want to take my ball and go home. Okay. There's the motion. Now watch now watch Glidewell. Look at Tony and them. Clay's just hoping it dies. Stan's going, what WTF? Don is trying to read the material and Brad goes, What will he do next? And Glidewell goes, Oh my God, I'm teamed up with <laughs> Psycho Boots. And this mess, and Fred Fricker's a good dude, but I ain't going to do nothing for him. Here we go. Second for discussion. We have a motion and a second. Public Nobody's happy. Bad, Brad's not happy. Please limit it to three minutes. Mr. Cosin, you stood up first. Swill that chair, Tony. You're not subject to public. But if there's anything else, you'll have a chance. And I will say, you know, listen to all the folks currently get finished before we get back and forth. He's uh, talking to Boots, but Boots ain't going to listen. Um, I do think it's always reasonable to allow Mr. Tricker a chance to respond to the to add anything Absolutely. contrary to Absolutely. him as well. Because you have your chances of board. have to keep count at three minutes because there's a lot of being coaxing between the next springs. Oh, Mr. Chairman, real quick, just for uh, restroom break purposes, is, is there any way you might could ask the audience just to uh, get some bit down? My apologies, I didn't mean to ask that so we could figure out how to wash your hands. Can we use it just to keep it day? Like half the room. So we got about 30, we're going to have plus Mr. Cosin, we got about 36 minutes of testimony to receive, or at least public comment to receive. That helps. Commit to Mr. Bray. Mr. if you need a break during that, just give me a nod, okay? Okay. There's some speculation on public opinion. What's the did I, Danny Kelson, the Phoenix Springs? Here's a possible scenario on driving. Listen up. You've got probably one of our most 
this straight arrow force of our community on trial that's been being driven by an attorney that specializes in early develops for filling in our wetlands in maximum density and getting things pushed through the zoning board of adjustment and bending the rules and backroom shenanigans and that's not helping the people I stop this time just a second mr Cosen. there's no evidence of any of that this is your opinion I, I understand that but I understand when you're talking about a human being in a public meeting you're letting yourself open so, so this is look, hey this is me and mr Cosen talking you will have a chance to talk this is a possible scenario of speculation okay i believe that there's an attorney that specializes in helping developers get land change zoning changes from conservation to maximum density filling in the wetlands and they're not doing anything to serve the people of walton county they're destroying Walton County. And Fred Tricker is our David fighting Goliath. He's the only one that's standing up to him. He's the one that's saying, this isn't right. I know how he feels. I was in the same place saying the same thing. And when I realized I was beating my head up against the wall, I turned in my resignation and left Fred to, to fend for himself. And he's pretty much been out ever saw that. So I know exactly how he feels. He's the voice of reason for the people. The people, this, the impression we get is that 60% of our elected officials sitting on this dais <laughs> are in the developer's pocket. They're not serving the best interest of the people of Walton County. So Fred is getting in the way He's speaking the truth, and he's trying to bring things to the to your attention, hoping that somebody will listen. Other people to jump on and try and do a, a public lynching on. Fred Tricker's the last one you would want to do that to. You might as well bring Mother Teresa up here on trial. Fred, he's the people's choice. He's the only one standing up for us. The two people that's fighting for us, that's fighting for us, we know who you are. Thank you, Commissioner Dons. Thank you, Commissioner Drake. We know who's for us and who isn't. Thank you. Boots are going to break the rules again. Right, right up, right down, and we'll do it. Get your crayons out, Boots, like Tony said, and write it down. Boots is mad at him. He gets madder. So first off, I, I just want to go back to something that Mr. McCormick said, and hopefully Clay can interject. As a 35-year professional executive, I had attorneys reach to me, attorneys tell me what to do. He said, and Mr. Atkinson has said this 100,000 times in just a year and a half that I've been participating, that he's an advisor. His, he is not Oz, he is not the gospel, he's an advisor, you take his word for what it is, you use it if you do, you do, I've watched the video, I'm not going to say, I totally disagree, he, he is the legal, he, Mr. Atkinson, provided his legal interpretation, he can do with it whatever he wants to do, so I want to go into my prepared speech because I just want to make sure, so here we are again, I'm deeply disappointed by this attack on Fred's character and integrity, despite his unwavering commitment to bettering our community. 
career to retire, professional executive has selflessly dedicated his time to volunteer efforts without seeking personal gain or public praise. The accusations against him are obviously motivated by personal agendas or directed by those with best interest. Contrary to rumors circulating on social media made by unelected citizens, Fred has never engaged in property development, nor has he ever presented any projects for approval before the county planning board. Fred's decisions on the planning board are meticulously considered along with the comprehensive... Watch Danny. Watch, watch the deputy behind him. He can't do this shit show. Fred's against Fred. A decision to dismiss Fred not only harms him, but also the entire county. I believe it suppresses, suppresses surpasses rather, mere injustice and verges on criminal behavior. It is my hope that Fred pursues legal action against his users and anyone voting for his removal from the planning board to restore his integrity. Our community is prepared to provide financial support to Fred in suit of justice. In conclusion, should Fred pursue legal recourse, Commissioner McCormick's attempt to discredit him is a door that opens the door of what I call opportunity, a door I always have walked through. This door of opportunity is legal discovery. A significant gift. Boots will punish, Todd, later. ...actions of the Walker County Public County Commissioners and the Walker County Planning Board. I believe I can speak for all of the citizens of Walton County and thank Mr. McCormick for his invaluable contribution as it promises to bring light to the bring light to the truth across all accusing boards and elected officials and citizens that may have contributed to this event today. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Who's next? Mr. Osborne, come on up. Oh, God, this guy. For the record, Alan Osborne, the issue with, Al with Fred came up over the Moxie Hotel in November. I find that interesting because that same issue came up basically over Sandestin on March 9th of 2021. At the end of the hearing in November, Mr. Watch Mr. Clay's eyes, he picked up. Let me clarify that. March 9th of 2021, go watch the BCC meeting and you'll see the BCC to vote. To, did they see them vote and direct Clay and Stan to bring back the proof over San Destin within 60 days. And folks, that was in 2021. And they didn't do it. So this very thing that got Fred uh, fired probably should have, or got him on trial, probably never should have happened because San Destin is in non-compliance and they all know it. That's what that's what Boots is mad about. He's afraid I'll be right, him and Danny. Look at Danny and look at Danny and Boots looking at me. Danny knows I'm right. He absolutely knows it. Standard. Well, he said the same thing in March of, of 2021 in a meeting where he said he didn't know what the standard was. He wasn't sure what it was. And that's what this is about. And I wasn't in November 20, 28 here and forth. I'm getting confused now. But it's in my TV show, and I'm sure y'all watched it. Okay, so what's interesting is during that quasi-judicial... Commissioner Gladwell went off into a discussion on what the Sandestin standards were. Not that probably Sandestin. It was unannounced. It wasn't on. And we went into a harumph meeting about what the standards were. But here's the bottom line. Matt Carpenter or somebody in planning uploaded new information prior to that meeting. It wasn't available to the planning board or the public. And thereby the process was breached. As it had been before, you should have remanded it back through the process for new information. The new information the board voted on was new information. Fred Tricker, in his other role as South Walton Council volunteer, had gone to Larry Jones and Sidney Knowles in 2020 and asked them to provide proof of the change in the Sandestin standards. They said they could not. So what Fred's being chastised here for is speaking up. And you know who accused him? Ship and Shipman's not here. Why ain't he here to pontificate on that garbage? And why wasn't the county attorney defending him the other day in front of 
Shipman, and Shipman made statements that were absolute that nobody questioned. He was there on having to defend himself, and anything Shipman said was taken. In fact, Shipman told the board, you can't do this. And the, and the attorney said, nothing. Clay advised him when he spoke, when Beto said that other members had been in the past a big place, they wandered up here. So you're, you're going to punish Fred for what other people have done. You punish Fred for telling you the process had been broken. You're going to punish Fred for telling you that you don't have anything in writing. In fact, Max said he wasn't going to follow the land development board. He was going to follow the attorney said. And I'm sorry, attorneys don't legislate new laws. Until the laws are changed, an attorney or a judge can't give you permission to break the law. Only punish you. You don't know what the standard is on Sandestin, and you want to throw him off because he asked questions in front of an attorney. And you're wrong, Mr. McCormick, and we all know it. Maybe he puts his hand up like, I don't care. I just want my way. Now this, this is a planning board member who cannot believe this shit. Brad's guy. Tony doesn't even know this guy's on the board. Mr. McCormick's position of whether or not Mr. Tricker should be removed, that's appropriate. Now, whether it's Mr. McZahn or anybody else will stand up here and specifically get into the details of other planning projects, which we are not hearing. But this is not the the argument that Mr. McCormick is alleging that Mr. Tricker violated. I believe Mr. McCormick had multiple bullet points on there, uh, and so I, I would defer to Mr. McCormick's actual statement, but he had five bullet points listed there. Um, so I would say Clay that, didn't want to have any claim to that crap Boots did with Shipman. Not about a matter that he has heard at the planning commission and never will hear the planning commission because the planning commission does not have authority over this matter. Okay. Clarification for rules. I was not allowed to question, which I respect the decision of the board. We're in public comment. questions from an audience that when it comes down to it who I put on a board if they don't like my decision they can take care of that but Boots is basically saying how dare they speak out now Boots is already getting sued over people's right to free speech and he wants the attorney to step in and say they badgered me and I want you to tell them that they can't say that they asked questions of me. He didn't have to answer them. So this is Boots still not realizing he's been sued for free speech, and he wants to tell. He wants the attorney to tell people what they can say. He wants to be strong arm Boots, trained by Quinn. God, what a mess! It was my decision to put on the board to represent my name and my district. My, now, my. I shouldn't be considered subject to cross-examination or my name. And, and that's why you're not answering questions. In fact, the meeting procedures indicate... In fact, you're breaking them now, Boots. The section does not require commissioners to answer impromptu questions. So if you wish to address what I said, or if any commissioner does, that is your prerogative and your right. But Mr. Buzan can't believe this crap. Blocks of time. If they need less, they're welcome to take less. But we'll go through those and we'll finish it up and then the board will have discussion in which you're welcome to discuss. What is it I'm not supposed to say now? <laughs> you don't talk about any planning project you just heard at the planning commission that may be coming before the BCC. Okay. The merit of the project, in other words. We'll talk about credit. I don't want to talk about pro I don't I don't say that that project. I just wanted to support Fred, who I think is a very valuable member of this. I also feel that once he appointed 
and, uh, and elected by you guys, nominated by one person and then elected. I, in my view, uh, Mr. Drake nominated me, the board elected me. I don't find that I necessarily uh, represent Mr. Drake anymore. That's not anywhere in what I interpret as the code. Um, I could personally tell Mr. This guy's only been on the board a very short amount of time. He's a new volunteer. He can't believe this. And he understands it better than Boots has after three or four, going on into his fourth year as a commissioner. That says it all, that Boots doesn't have a clue what's going on. Boots wants to answer a question. Ask a question. Are you uh, amazed that Frank can try to put this as not being possible? I think it, it would be very personal to me. In fact, um, when I found out he was being considered for being thrown off the board just as I was coming on, I was wondering what the heck I was getting into. Um, Amen. Everybody uh, does. I, I can't believe that this is happening and I'm embarrassed to be a part of anything like this. We need people like Fred who knows more about the, the rules, the statutes than I'll ever know, because I glaze over and fall asleep trying to read these things, right? We need him. We need more community involvement by people like the SWCC. Our job, I've lived my life in, in control systems where we're doing filtering of, of sensors from all kinds of things, and we have to decide what we want to believe, how we're going to merge all that information, and how we're going to come to a conclusion on how to get, say, you know, a rocket to the moon, right? Not that I ever got to do that. But that's what we have to do. And we have to look at the code, and we have to look at the uh, what it really says. And a lot of the time, it's people wanting to change zoning. Well, the code doesn't tell us exactly when you can change code. We're supposed to stick with zoning. So people are always asking us to change things. Um, I think we need Fred. We need more Freds. Probably a whole commission of Freds. Thank you. Look at Boots. He's so pissed off about that. Good job on you, Mr. Bazan. Boots getting madder and madder. Hi, Santa Claus. Hello, Nikki. I'm just, I honestly don't know what to say. I'm flabbergasted. I can't believe that Fred. I just don't know how to get it out. I've scaled videos over and over, over and over again. And um, it's my understanding, you know, with the sense as to DRI, what had happened um, with Fred, because I did see him approach the board, um, go back up and speak to the BCC, but it was because before we're planning, and he was given some new information. And if you do look at all of the videos, and you'll see how it all plays out, that Mr. Trigger's done nothing wrong but his job, and he's tried to protect us, and he's being a good steward. And I just, I think that we need to keep Fred, and also... Um, and also, we do need to answer the question about the Sandestin drainage, and that's why I was working so adamantly to get it on the agenda this for this meeting. Be but it will be on the February on the April the 23rd. Thank you. Ms. Morano. Here's your candidate for commissioner running against Tony Anderson, phony Tony. Here we go, Barbara. Classic. As you know, I've stood before you many times. I'm a board member of South Walton Community Council, and I'm very proud of that. I'm going to stick to what Mr. McCormick said in his letter. In a letter written by Mr. McCormick, quote, prior to Fred Tricker's appointment on the Planning Commission, I discussed with Fred Tricker that he would have to be fair and impartial and not let his own bias dictate his decisions. At every meeting that I've been at in the Planning Commission and the Board of County Commissioners, Mr. Fricker based his decisions on code, the Land Development Code, citizens' reports, citizens' letters, and staff reports, and he made his decision. I have personally witnessed 
bias by members of the planning commission, especially when it comes to rezoning. You just heard a new planning commission tell you that rezoning is a real big confusion because we don't have any standards. You can't look on page 20 and say if it meets this, you can rezone it. In fact, there's more personal bias from every of those PC members when it comes to rezoning. If you remember, we had to do the RV park on Mole Drive. This is what one of the planning commissioners said. I live next to an RV park and it was quiet, so therefore it passes. Another one was the Flynn rezoning. All right, this is another project that's right there. Well, I'd rather live next to live work situation with a parking lot rather than a possible short-term rental. Another bias. Okay, let's pass this one. Fred Tricker is the most knowledgeable member of the Planning Commission when it comes to plan and LPC. He's not a realtor, and you know one exists on there. He doesn't own an engineering firm, another one on there, and he doesn't have a lot of companies that are LLCs that would benefit. Mr. Prick. So we just described quietly without saying their names how conflicted the rest of the freaking planning board is. And that's why they want Fred off of there because he's not conflicted. And they're not used to that. They need to have somebody that needs something of them. That way they can, they've got something over like Mac needs a job. Think about that. All of the decisions about planning for residences and real estate are being managed by a guy who's not allowed to have a real estate license anymore because of fraudulent activity, accused theft, forever. And he's in charge of the rules, and he's reviewing the rules for us to follow right now. He's in charge of that too, Matt Carpenter. Right stand Sunday, if you're a citizen, say you don't want Matt that he has not told the county the truth about his background. I think Stan used to be a supervisor. So Barbara just told you everybody on the board, basically, but Fred is conflicted, mostly. Tricker does not have any private gains or losses. When Fred was appointed to... Okay, quick look at Danny. Danny, just because you can't see at the public... Can't see, y'all can't see me. I got my eyes covered up. We can see you, Danny. You might not can see us, but we see you. I, helping Boots eat this shit sandwich. Yes, I was very pleased about that. We didn't want to stay long. And I said, Fred, this is your opportunity. This is your chance. Fred found on the first few months he was there, the planning commission the department did not advertise correctly in the Defuniac Herald. And yet we have planning commissioners who did not pick that up. Could you imagine all those years we didn't advertise correctly? That's shocking. Because I trained. They covered that the up. Commissioners do great training. They told them about the Sunshine Law, but that's it. Many times the chair has to ask the planning director, tell me about this. That shouldn't happen. And as far as the ethics complaint from Mr. Schumann, I could just rip that up. It is you, useless. Sir, uh, You're welcome. Anybody else? Come ahead, please. Leitner, L-I-G-H-T, N-E-R. Um, I just want to go over the Commissioner McCormick's bullet points real quick. Most of it's repetitive, so I'll be quick. But the first one, um, Mr. Tricker is not the first to be on another board. And it, it didn't matter then. I just hope that he was given the same respect and spoken to and given the chance to make a choice before you do this of, of which board he wanted to set on. I, I don't know if that happened or not. Um, on bullet point number two, in, in that meeting, I watched it over three or four times also, the county attorney gave some million dollar advice and told Mr. Tricker to go ahead and to speak and he put the burden on the board to hear him as a member of the public and not as a member of the planning commission.
decision. So I, I don't understand that one. Number three. Hold on. Danny just picked it. Oh, damn. You missed it. He picked a better mole. Go ahead, Randy. I'm sorry. I don't know enough about that. That, that would be the one that may make me Tony Swivlin. of a legislative hearing is that he really didn't do anything wrong there. But I could be, I could be wrong on that. Number four is Patty. I, I sit on a little pity board. And I repeat stuff three times a meeting on a little $200,000 max board. Um, up to two. You're going to want to say things for clarification. Or you're, it's going to be said in a way that you're thinking a little differently and you, you don't catch that it's the same thing. I, I don't understand why that's on there. That number four really makes me feel like is this just some personal vendetta? Um, it, it really does. Number four is ridiculous to me. Um, number five. Um, Fred Tricker voted against the rezoning of vote for item due to not meeting to a code, even when planning staff stated the code was met. To me, I, I may completely misunderstand it. To me, that whole sentence negates the entire need for a planning commission at all. If they're just there to do what they're going to do, what's the purpose? Why, why can't they ask questions? So that's just my opinion on that. And, and the last thing I want to say, um, I can't remember your words exactly, so I won't quote them, but you basically said and directed the rest of the commissioners not to act on the anything the public has to say. I just want to remind you that doing what the public tells you to do, it's, it's like that's the one thing you're supposed to do so job is to do what the public tells you to do. That's your only job. That's it. Thank you. Boots wants to respond. He can't. He wants to say something. I'm a detective. Oh, well, I was. A-M-E-I-G-A. Um, I think, um, Mr. Chair, I think you know where I'm going to go with this. I'm also a board member of South Walton Community Council, to be clear. And I would agree with Boots if if those facts were in this complaint. Um, Fred is one of the most knowledgeable. I know, I know, I know. Um, You're supposed to be quiet, Boots. And I don't really think that any of that is true. I think that um, Fred is one of the most knowledgeable. Now look at Boots. He's so mad at me, and I said I'm laughing about the ethics complaint because we know he sh he was shipman and Trey's puppet or whoever. He's in. He he just does, they just can't let so all those gestures he's doing and Tony. Look at Tony's been watching Boots lose his mind. Tony's looking at him going, "Oh my God!" And Danny's over going, "God, is it over yet? Is it over yet?" But Boots is getting wound the hell up. He he's dying to say something. He's this is the real Boots right here. And we, as Mr. Forrest said, we need him. We need him on here. We need him to stay, and we need more people like him. And so I hope and I pray that you all vote to keep him on that commission. It's important that we have guys like him. Thank you, Ms. Harris. Ms. Harris? Ms. Harris comes up. Can we take up the floor? So we're going to pick back up with Suzanne Harris because everybody had... Had to go to the bathroom. And Suzanne's going to close out some of the public comment here on this. And, uh, oh, except for I think there's going to be one jerk who speaks, but we'll identify him here shortly. So come on, Suzanne. Tell them like it is. Uh, Y'all, this is a really sad day for Walton County. Listen up, people. And I don't think you did any of this to ugly to Fred. I don't think this you meant this to be personal in any form, shape, or fashion. I honestly think that Walton County doesn't stop twisting. Tony knows it. I don't even, I don't even know Fred. 
for tomorrow that's really came up. I, I think Fred came to two South Washington Republican Club meetings about three years ago and hadn't been since. So I'm not on the South Washington Community Council or anything. But I think when you take a citizen and you humiliate them the way this today has gone, and this wasn't your choice to do it this way, Boots. This, this is the way it has to be done. But when you take a public citizen, when usually we're out begging citizens to serve on boards, and you absolutely humiliate them for something that... Look at Tony. Stream he would have done on purpose. That is an embarrassment. I know Mr. Shipman very well, and I am. He's not, a shithead. It's my think opinion. Mr. Shipman did this on purpose? No, I don't. I think this thing is a snowball going downhill, and I think it's gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. And I think y'all can stop it. We have enough lawsuits in this county. They're an embarrassment. Good people don't want to serve on a board if they're ever going to go through this. Y'all tried to throw me off the planning board when I was there. <laughs> you just couldn't get the votes back then. So, really, but I didn't go through this. I would have been glad to. I'd have gone straight on to court just like Fred's going to do. But I don't think any of y'all are bad people. I think this has gotten out of hand, and I think you need to show the citizens of this county, y'all care about the citizens, that you're not just going to do something and at their first mistake, you're going to you're gonna put them through this. Because I'm going to tell you, y'all could put me through this, and I wouldn't have a problem at all. But it is a shame. Fred Tucker has kind of been a hero to the people. He studies the planning stuff. He knows what he's talking about. I've never been to a planning board meeting since any of y'all have been on. But this is sad. And I think y'all all need to stop. You should have taken a break after me, but you really need to stop and you need to think about it. And you need to think, is this really the legacy y'all want to leave in Walton County to the citizens? I think it is. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Please identify yourself and spell your last name. My name is Lynn Edwards. I don't have a lot technical to say, but I'm a voice of just a standard person who tries to come and understand what's going on at the meetings. And I have to tell you, it's scary. It's very scary to the regular people. I think it's going to be increasingly hard for you to find citizens who dare to come to meetings, who dare to speak up, and who Amen. think their voice actually counts. I'm not looking at anyone in particular, but I don't think you're representing the people of the county, particularly when it comes to people who defy you, really. And Suzanne Harris said, it stole my line. Fred Tricker is a hero. Amen, Fred. Neighborhood parties, and I hear people talk incessantly. My gosh, more development, more development. We don't have good water. Gosh, I, it takes me an hour and a half to get home from work. There's no, there are no buses. There's no business. And then I hear on the other side, it's all about taxable roofs. Well, I think we're letting the wolves run away with the farm the whole farm and you know once these homes go in you can't tell people they can't live there anymore i i've heard said at some of the meetings and i'm just an observer hey you know we can't stop them our hands are tied i don't believe that for a minute i don't believe that for a minute because when i hear about the meetings and land use and the comprehensive plan i see changes and changes and changes 40 of them deep why do we even have you know, a land code or any kind of a comprehensive plan. It doesn't make any sense to a common person. So I'm telling you, I already know which way the wind's going to blow. You're going to take this hero to the people off this committee, and it's a tragedy. It's a tragedy for the Look town. It's a tragedy for the people. And whoever you put on it, I bet will have some connection um, uh, to this attorney, and I'm kind of to Mr. Shipman, I'm going to say his name, because I follow very much a particular development where I live. The board originally voted against it. It was supposed to be affordable housing. Yay, we won six months. And I heard Mr. Shipman say to his client, don't worry about it. We'll be back again, and the commissioners will give it the next time. And you know what? They got it. They got it. Pretty soon.
soon we're going to be hemmed into our homes without the ability to get out. More taxable rules. We need voices of reason. And by the way, if we were to pay Mr. Tricker for what he's worth, we couldn't afford a man like that. Never mind his integrity. Thank you for listening. Lynn, she has a question for you. L Y N E. Mr. King. Here comes the one bozo. Boots is buddy, Danny's buddy. Uh, since Fred threw me under the bus about buying lunch, um, <clears throat> you know, I, I felt like Fred and I had a had a good meeting, and and my I've been a proponent of a minimum lot size for a number. Of That's not what this meeting's about. It's about. Who cares what you're a proponent of? You're a developer. And this guy's our county realtor. I also talked to some developer types and, and they asked the question, what would be the minimum lot size? You have to see what I'm telling you. It's exactly I also talked to some developer types. What does he do? Stand there in the mirror and can put on his real estate hat and then take it off and then put on his developer hat? You go look through the county records and search for John King, and you'll see exactly what he's doing in these boards. In today's planning commission, a planning commissioner had to step down, walk around to the other side, because it was his project in front of the commission. That's how conflicted he was. Developer said, "Well, uh, how about 3,500 square feet?" I said, "Well, that's a non-starter. That that just is not something that that the public at large and certainly South Walton Community Council, who seems to have a voice here, that it's it's ever going to be something that's that's doable in that." And I, so I got an email from. Notice said he didn't want it. He said some people would whine about it. He didn't say it was even bad. He said it was a non-starter. Because the people wouldn't put up with it, not because he wouldn't try it. Let's let's go ahead and clarify, Mr. King. Go ahead, Mr. King. Stick that foot farther down your throat. Fred, after this meeting, the suggestion was, hey, John, hey, he went to meeting. I thought we got a lot uh, done in discussion. What do you think about a minimum one acre? And that's a non-starter. You cannot get a landowner to go along with that. And and, and you guys, you know, I think you, you know. Somebody said you're here for the to to the, to express the will of the people. No, I think you're here to to take care of all people. And 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 I, you know, Fred, prior to being on the planning commission, every time he there would be some land use change or some development project. Virtually every time he would get up there and say, you got to stop this. you got to stop this. Because they were breaking the damn rules. They kept changing the zone. You presented no evidence of that whatsoever. You just said it. And add some plans. Sorry, sir. Simply because he'll turn down some shit that I can make a lot of money on. And and and, and Gary and I, he's causing problems for us and other people that just want to do whatever the hell they want because it's all about the dollar. Not once did he say this isn't good for the community. He said, man, the landowners won't go for it. But look, if the landowners bought the land with the use that's in place, they will go for it, John. If the board doesn't and Mac don't change what it can be used for, they'll absolutely have to go for it. They don't have a freaking choice unless the, unless the law gets changed and the rules. So what bullshit? You can't, you can't be against everything and have a plan. Well, I'm, I'm still hopeful. You can't change every bit of the plan and still have one. Company, this company, this 
that's a good fit for what you for what you're trying to Nobody's buying this bullshit. Write them down on with crayon. Boots is mad at him. Look at him, mad as hell. But I, I don't have all my crayons to write it down. Yeah, I'm not going to listen to the play. Boone said we all missed cotton picking. I thought we were at a hearing. I'm absolutely <laughs> losing it. This is the only guy that supported him, and Boots is, is mad that John got the words wrong that Shipman told him to say. You know? You were supposed to say, I support Boots because it was his guy that let him throw him off. That's not what you were supposed to say. Now you pissed off Boots supporting him. To represent my district on that board. There's that board's people, and that's a whole different conversation. Just want to correct you. This, what this board does is just a confirmation of that, but it's my choice. This is the same guy who voted that Danny couldn't keep Robert his choice on the board. And now, he, and look, Danny's sitting there going, is this idiot know that he did the same thing to me and I can't have Robert on the board? So if we want Fred on the board, you can't stop us, Boots, because you threw my guy off the board. You voted against him. But I didn't throw a hissy fit. <laughs> you can't make this shit up. Go ahead, Boots, you idiot. I just want to clarify this. You made reference to the board put pro or con at the end of the day. He's referencing my name. My name. My, district, my ball. Thank you. Thank He's you. not taking my soccer ball and going over to Horsepower Pavilion and playing when I'm not around. First of all, um, I think Fred Tricker is a hero, and I think he's a wonderful person, and I think he knows the land development Boots is pissed. And probably better than anyone else, and certainly better than any of us up here. Uh, there's absolutely no doubt about it. Um, I respect your opinion on all of the developments and all of the issues. I highly respect it because I know that if you've made a decision, it's because you have looked and you have... Look at Boots. He wants to stare down Donna, but she don't give a shit. ...is accordance with the law. And, and I have never, ever wavered on that. You have always been the voice of reason. And I, I agree. With, I wish that all the people on that board were, were like you, Fred, because I think that South Walton wouldn't look the way it does. You've only been on that board for a couple of years. And... Uh, we kind of messed up South Walton a long time before that. Um, and I wish if you were on there, I think it would have been, made a, a huge difference. Uh, I, I don't believe that um, you've ever hid the fact, hidden the fact that you were on South Walton Community Council. That's no, that's Boots being a dumbass. various meetings and you've always gotten up and, and said whether you're speaking on behalf of, of South Walton Community Council. So how anyone could ever question is, is beyond me. I just don't understand that. Uh, I also don't understand that uh, the comment that you've demonstrated that you're unwilling to separate your personal opinion and associations. Um, I just don't understand that because your opinions are based on what the land development code and the comp plan say. And Boots is shaking his head now. He can't understand the word, but he's shaking his head. As I mentioned, when I look and I do look at everything that comes before the board, I'll scroll on my computer and look to see, and I look to see what the board did on a particular, on any, any development. And when you have said, when you have agreed, and 
and there's no way that you have that you're against everything, uh, which is what Mr. King referred to. There are tons of developments that you have approved. They've been filed. So here's what Don just said. We all know John King's a liar. Thanks for pointing it out, Donna, because what John said, she just said, we all know that's not true. And nobody else, nobody else says, oh, John's telling the truth. No, nobody says that. Or, or four O's with you on there. There's a lot of things. You, if they're reasonable, if they're smart, you approve them. If they're out of bounds, you don't. And, and I, for one, appreciate you taking the time and the effort and everything that you do to make sure that you're doing it right. And, and I have the utmost respect for you and the utmost respect to, that I know, in fact, you're doing what's best for the people. And the people in this room are all speaking about how they care about you and they know that you care about the community. That's the whole thing. You care about the community. You care about the way it looks. You care about the way it is. And we need you. We need people like you. And on... There's a comment about the November 28th meeting on the Moxie Hotel. Well, when you got up, you said, and, and you asked our, our county attorney if you could speak, and, and it, it was absolutely, yes, you can. So what was wrong with that? I have no idea. I don't see that there was anything wrong with that. So I don't really see anything on here on this list of things that, you know, are the justification for removing you. Um, I just don't see that any of those are really accurate as far as I can see. And again, I just, um, I appreciate everybody that, that got up to speak on his behalf. I know there's a ton more people that feel the same way. I've had a lot of people reach out to me and tell me, and I, I just, um, I think it, you, it would be a huge loss to lose you on this board, a huge, huge loss. And I want to thank you for all that you have done because you're always there. You always do the right thing. And and I appreciate you. Way to go, Don. Mr. Tricker, also, you have a chance to come up and speak again, too. Yeah, let's do it, Mr. Tricker. Come ahead, Mr. Tricker. We're just trying to keep Boots from having to speak. Boots knows he's lost this boat. He's looking at Tony. He's looking at Don and Brad. Danny's, look at Danny wiping his head going, good God, I don't like this, let's be on the desk, let's look around, this is awful. And I just wanted to point out something that is in his letter to you all that I thought was really inappropriate. The last sentence of his letter says, Mr. Tricker, through his actions, has disqualified himself from continuing to serve on the Planning Commission and must be removed. Who the hell has this guy to tell you that I must be removed? He's working for developers. He's making money. Amen. That's right for the county. That's wrong. A dirty lawyer wanting good people thrown off the board. I mean, I'm running this. That's what Boo says. I'm going to do this. I don't care what the chairman and attorney say. The information I was talking about was the information that had been submitted by the engineer regarding the project. And there was also a discussion about new information that Steve Hall reported on a meeting that he had had with Alan Osborne and I, he reported there was no new information, two different subjects. I wasn't talking about that one. I was talking about the first one, which had to do with the engineering study that David Smith had done. And that was new information. So I questioned whether the project should not have gone back to the Planning Commission because it was information the Planning Commission had never seen. It was only submitted the day before the, the BCC hearing. So just, just to make that clear. Okay. Anything else, Mr. Chairman? No, sir. Thank you. Okay. That's your vote. Mr. McCall. Sir. I'm going to grin. I'm going to humiliate you some more. I don't believe in 
especially emotive wise that you tried to do anything right or wrong okay. but I'm but I'm gonna punish you anyway I'll concede as I ate up let's go back to your comments about showing up for this board all that you was going to present you tried to convince this board you had new information when in reality the whole package of information no matter whose name was on it listen closely after a conversation and you try to bring in information that was your report is based off of information we had heard a thousand times on this board am i am i incorrect if you had not talked to alan osborne <laughs> right there's a problem you haven't heard it boots the board has never heard any of the information about the drainage in a notice of proposed change, which is the only place the board can take that action. The state can issue a notice of violation unless y'all want to. So it's, you may have had the information, but you've never had it formally presented or acted on boots. You haven't, you freaking moron. You can't produce it, you idiot. You can't, you won't let me have a conversation on it because you have to ignore it because you and Danny and Clay and every swinging Richard up there, except for the ones that don't have a swinging Richard, nobody can disprove everything I've said. You've ignored state letters. You've broken the law. You're a dirty, stinking ex-cop who got demoted before he was thrown off the force and you're not a bit fucking better than you were then, you piece of shit. Okay, go ahead, you son of a, you know what you are. God, just scum of the earth. I, there's nothing you can do about it, Boots. You can't fix stupid, and you were born an idiot. Not for long. Yeah, we'll see. Get 300 votes if you're lucky. Yes, it has. You moron. You idiot. Again. 89-09, anybody go look it up, adopted the Sandestin Settlement Agreement from 1984, which specifically defined the retention standards of water required in the DRI. But you're not sure what DRI means. <laughs> you're not sure. It's, it's big letters in the alphabet, Boots. What you said is wrong. You couldn't prove it on your best day. Just like you're getting ready to withdraw this because you're going to lose and get sued. You don't do it for good reasons. You do it for self-preservation. You've done everything. I'm an idiot. I got a backup. Legal's trying to wave me off. Tony says I'm not voting for this. Stan don't know what to do with this moron. Now you talk to Alan Osborne, I'm going to throw a fit. At the end of the day, I'm trying to shut down 
Alan Osborne, Horse Bear Pavilion, and anybody else that doesn't go along with my phony baloney idiot crap. Including I brought my fan club to the back. My manager and my wife came to see me wreak, wreak my wrath upon the board and Fred Tricker. Go on, you idiot. That's what the hell this is about. No, 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 no. Boots is losing it. <laughs> Look him winking at us. He's in charge. Cla now Clay is sitting over there telling Tony, you can't let this pass. And Donna's sitting there looking at him doing it. They're just blowing their mind, Danny's going, this is getting worse and worse and worse. The deputy's over there texting his friends, can you believe this shit show? Finance his head's down, and Stan's looking at him, looking at him, oh my God, were you ever a cop? <laughs> you can't make this shit up. Donna doesn't even want to make eye contact with Boots because she's afraid the stupidity might be contagious that he's spewing out over there. You're still an advisor to help me. With the, with the you might have to buy me a beer. I might have to buy you beer. We're not going to let politics play into this. All right? Right. We'll get some things done. But when you took this job, was it with the expectations to stay? When I accept the, the position? When I offered it to you. Was it not offered to you on a temporary basis at your request? Yes, absolutely. Till I come to a point where I've got somebody else to I'll, replace I'll you. I offered to find you or replace you, you for did. myself. You, you sure did. Yeah. And that's the point I'm just trying to make. At this point in time where I'm at, it's time for me to change. Stop. I'm sorry to stop you, Boots. But folks, we're not going to have a discussion in the audience while this is going on. And I've asked you two or three times to not be discussing this. Well, let Listen, while this has been going on, Clay and Tony have been whispering like madmen out of the sunshine. People have been going to the bathroom. There's been conversations going up there. This is a classic example. There's a set of rules for the elected and connected, and then there's a different set of rules. Just like when Shipman stands up in a planning meeting out of order and just stands and looms, and, and his buddy Lee Perry don't sit him down like everybody else. Let Mr. Tricker talk and let Mr. McCormick talk. We're not going to have comments in the audience. I'm, I'm going to end this because I'm getting emotional about it because we are friends. Uh, I cannot, looking at the totality, not one thing, the shipment thing, all that, but the totality. I'm telling you, looking eye to eye, I think sometimes that you're letting some interference cloud your judgment. And I can't have, if there's a lawsuit based off this, your board's decision. Clay's whispering, hey, Tony, we can't let this go forward. I do not have it, and I'll shut up and respond. Uh, no, I, I have nothing to say. Don't do it. Mr. Gray, you had some questions? Boots is done, but he realizes he ain't got three votes here to man it. So for me, there's there's one thing that I'm trying to get to the bottom of in the reference to the Moxie Hotels came up a couple of times. Um, I think that was where maybe Commissioner McCormick began his uh, that there was some consternation that began at that point. And I was stippling at that. Yeah. So I'm trying to I'm trying to be very judicious about this. Um, like if the reference was made earlier about David and Goliath, though I mean we all we all as citizens, as Americans, we have our opinion on who David is and who Goliath is. So I don't I don't like
like the argument that this person shall serve on this board or should serve on this board because they believe in the advocacy of my view of who David is because someone may have an opinion contrary to that of their opinion who David is and therefore they should serve on the board because they have an equal opinion that that original person does. That's not fair. That argument isn't, isn't strong in my opinion. The strength lies in the ability to be independent and fair. Okay, I watch Fox News. I watch Newsmax. So. Okay, that's the whole thing right there. Brad believes that he's being independent and fair based on everything he says. And Boots realizes that he don't have three votes. So just to keep this from people complaining I'm making my show so long, Oh, you've heard Donna. We've heard Brad. Danny said he never wanted to have the hearing. And Clay has whispered to Tony nonstop about how many times Boots has caused them problems and is going to get them sued. So he don't have Tony's vote, not because Tony would love to throw Fred off and make his asshole buddy Shipman so happy, but it's not worth losing an election over and it's not worth getting sued over right away when Boots has already been sued three or four times for violating people's First Amendment rights. You know, you just can't make this shit up. So I want to get to the end here. Grant them and then become, you know, want to be political rock stars in their own right and not give us independent, unbiased information. I want to make sure that that remains pure. So... As far as today's hearing is concerned, the allegations are made that you you took actions that warranted to be removed from the board, and we have to vote on that. And, and, and my review and assessment is that of the five points that were stated, I kind of lumped four of them in together, and I don't think that you have done anything with those four. And then on the other one, I don't know the answer. I don't know that, I don't know if you were, what your intentions were. And because I don't know, I can't take that opinion that yes, I want you to remove, because I would love to know the answer to that. Uh, but the, um, the burden of proof does not allow for that. Or the, 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 so as it stands today on, on the question of whether or not you should be removed, I don't, so there's your bottom line. Boots wants to get out right now, but Tony's going to give Danny a chance. Hold on. I want to give Danny his chance. And so really all I needed to hear today was Commissioner McCormick said he didn't, have, he didn't want you to continue. So the, I want you to continue. But you do have, it does matter if you do or not. Danny still doesn't understand. All he needed to hear was whether Boots wanted you or not. And the rest of it didn't matter, even if everything about what Boots has said was a lie and not true and unfounded in person. Danny didn't give a shit. Or anybody else really is immaterial to me based on my vote. As long as he won, as long as he was happy with you, I was happy with you because I've always respected you and liked you. So I hope you feel the same. Absolutely. And um, but it's not personal. Oh, I, I and I, I I go back to the, I was, well I go back to my original comment. I find this distasteful. Because I almost voted again. Well, I didn't really vote. And I almost voted against opening up the public here because I didn't want to go here. And I mean, Boots had no support. Not even butthole Danny, but he just did it because he had to. Look at Boots had it. Look at him. But that being said, I think, um, you know, I think I have to vote the way I believe. And, um, uh, and I will say this, um, I believe it was 1982, um, somewhere in there, 
Um, there was a gentleman who was Secretary of State, named Alexander Haig. The, in 81, when the president got shot, he um, makes... I'm going to go ahead and get off this because Danny... This has nothing to do with Alexander Haig. Danny's trying to distract stuff and trying to find something to compare it to. This is Boots being a dumbass and has nothing to do with something on the national level. So let's get over here to this. Watch Boots have to eat crow. If my name is put on a lawsuit or not. If there's a, some sort of court. Uh, You've created your own lawsuits, Boots. Boots said he's going to stand by what he said. He still believes everything, which means he's only going to dismiss it because he knows he's going to lose and he doesn't want to be sued. That's it. That's it, the bottom line. He still believes everything. He's mad. He still wants Fred thrown off the board. He doesn't have three votes. So we've all got to watch this diatribe of why it's his my, 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 and why I want him off. Because he played with Alan Osborne at the Horsepower Pavilion, maybe. Who knows? It's bullshit. I'm not going to be intimidated by lawyers. Or by the public on either side of the fence. Yeah, you are. Because sometimes I just have to make the hard decisions that are not popular. All right. With that said, I think I've accomplished two things. But in the sense of fair play and just mutual respect, Chairman, I pull my second home. Listen to this. Boots doesn't even know he made the motion. He knows he lost, so he tells the chairman he's going to pull his second because he made his point. He made all of us go through this for months. He made Clay do this, and now Clay's going to show up and be the planning lawyer on the 11th. Or today he did. What happened to the attorneys that were already on salary? Why weren't they doing it? Why were we paying Clay by the hour when we had att attorneys on salary? That don't smell right, does it? So Boots is going to eat crow here and say he's doing it, but he still believes the whole thing. That, 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 the hard decision is CYA for Boots. Don't want to be sued for the fourth or fifth time. On the matter on the board, before the board, and I put it in the hands of the yeah, rest of the no second. You made the motion. Yeah, made the motion. I pulled my motion. <laughs> I, pull, I certainly pulled a second. Like, listen to Danny. I certainly pulled a second. You idiot. Why'd you put us through this? And Danny... Boots could have let Danny off the hook, made that decision for Danny, said, I'm going to fire him anyway just because Boots wants it. And Danny's so mad that he had to say that, and Boots could have saved him from saying that. No, a matter of CY. I don't always agree with it, and you don't always agree with me when, when we vote. What the way I vote. The thing is, though, when I've been friends for a long time, we're not best buds, but. Look at Danny. He is so pissed he had to go through this. So. We're going to get on to a couple other things, and we're going to show you what Brutes does in retaliation. So we're going to go to public comments. Anyway. So now we're going to pick back up at public comment. Boots didn't get anything he wanted, and let's just pay attention to public comment and Boots' behavior. And public comments. Listen to what Barbara has to say about the county real estate guy.
Morano. Commissioners, I want to thank you for that decision. I want to thank you, Commissioner McCormick, for the decision of keeping Mr. Tricker on the board. He's mad. I did vote for running for county commissioner. But you also heard from John King. Or I won't say that. I'll go back. This is public comment. But you also heard from John King, who's a realtor and a developer, and also an employee of the county, say that Mr. Trickle was not a good fit. I was standing outside in the hallway with my husband, and John King came up to me and said, you're not a good fit, and you don't have a vision for this county. I would never say that to anyone, but this was said to me by John King, that I do not have a vision for this county. On February 26th, my chest was broken open, but I'm standing here, thank God, thanks to Mayo Clinic, and wanting to put four years ahead, and an employee tells me that I will not be a good fit, like he just told you about Fred Tricker. This is embarrassing. And, and you know, I gone and I also asked Mr. King if he bought the property at Mesa Bayou, the one where three commissioners said should not be rezoned. He did buy that property. I said, do you know, you realize that's still residential. I have an idea a year from now he will come back and ask for a rezoning. This is the man you hired to represent the county. I'm shocked. I'm shocked. Mr. King is not an employee. I, do you have any questions for me? No. I mean, do you have a question, Mr. Quanti? One. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you, Commissioner McCormick. One, I didn't know you had certain and I well, hope you recover from well. Okay. Thank you. I think you. it is. <laughs> With all due respect, I was just asked to give credence to somebody who presents herself as a citizen and has that right. He is no different than what Mr. Trick was. He has this right to his public and trying to make it out of one and not the other from forcing. I just, I don't think that's fair, but. Just my comments. Like Boots knows what fair is. He does represent. Okay. He, he, he doesn't matter what capacity he in. Don't ask me to give credence and allowances that one person is just a citizen and the other one doesn't have the, a citizen's right to say something. This is who you hired. But, but he, he is not an employee. He's a contract. Well, he's we a contract with him. He's a it's basically a vendor. He's not an employee. And he's a vendor who bought a piece of property that you did not approve rezoning, and I'm sure he hopes to rezone that. So, thank you. Mr. Roy. Thank you, Mr. Roy. Okay. Was there any closer, Mr. Roy? No, I'm sorry. Like nobody's mad at Todd. Todd's not mad at anybody. He just wants to tell people his opinion and some stuff. I want you to watch this. Sorry, Todd. I'm going to fast forward to you to a little bit. Boots can't stand it. Sure. Do I have four? Sure. Oh, sure. 
Where were you several years ago with us that were here fighting this issue? You have come on board now at the tail end oh, and decided, so. no, you can hear me out. You've got to say your piece. No, 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 no. Let me ask you this. I'll tell you where, where is right here in, in where, was, where I was in the <coughs> He knows Boots didn't even know who he was. You want to come up and talk about on this board about our actions on this. Some of us who went on board and fired out. I'm generational here. I was on the witness list. Witness to customary use from the 30s from my grandparents and my daddy who's 87 years old. For you to come up here. I could have bought Beach property cheap, but I was stupid. I've been here forever. And I'm going to chew you out because... There's this unwritten rule that if you're from here long enough, by God, you can do what you want to. And you better listen to me, boy. I'm going to tell you, you don't know I'm Buford T. Justice. Tony's like, shut up, Boots. Look at Danny patting his arm. Man, Danny's like, come on. Come on, little boy. Sit down. But what he's telling Boots is there's pending litigation. But Boots says he don't care. Well, Boots, how come I can't talk about pending litigation, but you can? Man, man just go ahead and show us that there's a complete different set of rules for everybody. Except you. Hey, Tony and Clay just don't know what to do with Boots. And the rest of them are just, Danny's rubbing his arm, maybe his leg. Who knows? Where was the initial decision made? You and I in this position. Like, Tony's like Boots. Mr. Drake, I was actually present when you were to the town hall in the South Volta County Health School. Uh, and you, you spoke. I was at the initial meeting when the Board of County Commissioners, I believe his name was Larry Jones, who was either the chair or he was the, he was the county administrator. So I was at those meetings. I moved my family down here because I. So Boots is losing his mind as everybody talks about customary use. He's so upset. He's just beside himself. He just he just can't believe this night has gone this way. And we'll finish it up and then watch what happens. We got beat. Well, so you have to you have to take that message not just to us, but to the Facebook. I would love to figure out how we all get this. That's what I'm saying. So can we? Can, so I actually make reference. Bring together a work group and, and figure out a way just to how to do that. What do we need to do? To create the strategic plan. Do the things you can do today. Get the get the vendors off the beach. Tony just wants it to end. He can't believe Brad asked the question. Tony's like, I got to pee. Go ahead, go. Tony's like, please, I got to pee. It's a mess. Thank you, sir. And I, 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 I didn't mean to do. I don't know if you took it the wrong way at first or what, but I, I acted. I'm sorry, you're in a tick, and it set you off. So now Boots is telling him what he did wrong on social media. Watch this shit. Just that much man be ripped apart. His integrity bought the question for who who knows why, for what going on two hours. We overlooked that, we forgave that, we said, look, look, let's move on. Thank you. Thank you for doing the right thing after you did the wrong thing in about three minutes be quiet. Then we have somebody whoa, come whoa, up. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute, oh, wait a minute. Oh, Boots, is Boots has interrupted it. He, he just thinks he can interrupt people. We can't interrupt them, but Boots has. Now, look at Brad goes, oh, my God. Look at Donna. Clay goes, save me. Stan goes, I've got to write people and tell them how bad this shit show is. 
Danny doesn't realize Boots is going to try to grab his ball and go run and sit on the bench. I mean, it, this is absolute classic Boots. I'm going to storm off because this woman told me to shut up and stop interrupting her. We fed him a sandwich. show on that. Tony's telling her, I tried everything I could. I hurt my little pinky. I hurt my pinky finger. Just trying to bang this gavel to shut him up. <laughs> Amen. Hell, here goes this guy going to straighten out boots. What that bullshit he said earlier. Stan just looked at the back of the room at Tony Corman and the, and and he knows that I've given him a bunch of information that shows that Corman and Wade Wilmoth uh, did not follow due process requirements and that Matt Carpenter and them have sat on substantial competent expert opinion and direction from the state to take action without formally putting it before the board in an NOPC hearing. Standard that the county LDC requires. You have competent expert evidence in your possession uh, from Dr. Harper, the DCA, the PTO, and the Florida Board of Engineers that said you're in violation of it. I mean, you're 0% retention. And I just want to point out that what Mr. McCormick told you was false. This board, and or any board before it, the only thing that matters on Sandesson is if it's put before a board in an NOPC. 
Boots is going to hear me talking, and he's going to run back out there because we need another dose of stupid. You should have stayed in the shitter, Boots. Your 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 political career is already there. You should have just stayed in there with it. Stan starts texting about that. Okay, Suzanne said her piece about the Fred and that, and she's going to talk about the problems on 30A. But this this show is about the shit show of boots. Part one and part two, and I hope you've seen that this is a person who can't be in charge of handing out donuts. That's it. He has he he's got some serious issues. It's not about the truth. It's all personal to Boots because he wants to be right. And he's ate the bait, and he's ate the bait from Trey and them. And I guess his friend Chuck's lost. He's lost his buddy Chuck over it. And uh, Boots is standing all alone with all kind of issues. Ain't that right, Bootsy boy? And that's the way it was for part two. We're going to have part three, which is going to be the golf course shit show. And then we're going to go over some more planning issues. So you can't make this shit up. So so the guy who lost his license, who's running planning, he's the one that should have been standing up before this board, not Fred Tricker. Like I say, how can a guy who's not allowed to mess in real estate by agreement with a governing body in Florida, why is he in charge of any of Walton County's real estate business? He shouldn't be. And he's in charge of the comp plan? Yeah, you citizens watching this, you better call your administrator and say, what the hell? And write your commissioner so they'll talk about it in public. This is, this is jacked up and something needs to be done. And Boots, you're an idiot. Thanks for proving it to all of us. We always knew you were, but thanks for taking the bait of all those other people. Hell, all I did was give you some information, and and you ate the bait of what other people told you, and you sabotaged yourself. And it couldn't have happened to a better type, better person. Till next time, when we start taking Trey apart and telling about Trey and some more about Shipman. But if you want your county. In your world, in your community, in your traffic, and all those other decisions of you people who live here, you better stand up this come election and make some changes, and you better tell these people, we've had enough of this. We're too crowded, we can't even go to work, and our kids ain't got nowhere to play ball. Until next time, you can't make this shit up on the Alan Osborne Show, but you can unelect it, and you can watch a commissioner make an absolute fool of themselves 
anytime Boots is, is, is up there on the stand. So, till next time, y'all keep straight out there. You just saw they couldn't keep themselves straight, even with deputies, a lawyer, and an administrator. They just don't know what to do. Scratching your head till next time. On behalf, on behalf of Danny Lidewell, I made it. He made. It, he just can't keep stepping in. Can't keep from stepping in the shit. See you next time.